You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Well, hello and howdy, cowboys from the wild, wild west of Nuevo Mexico. My name is Paul. <laughs> and I'm Rob. And this is episode 711. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Appreciate it as always. Another inf- another informational podcast from the boys of Ask Drone You. Indeed. Here to help you. But before we go there, uh, do you want to say really excited for everyone who's already signed up for the DroneYouGiveaway.com. We've got a few days left for that. You're definitely going to want to take a second and sign up to win that because not only will you win a drone but you'll also win months of exclusive access into our 27 courses Mm. uh, at the drone you and you also get a landing pad so if you want a mavic pro platinum landing pad and access to education to increase your skill whether you want to show off to your friends or whether you want to turn your passion into profit you know where to go droneyougiveaway.com yep Uh, before we go into our question for today which is going to be talking about you know what can we all do with this whole drone mapping and modeling thing and by the way guys we have a show coming up very soon where we're going to talk about the legalities issues of mapping and modeling and then we're going to do another show where we're actually going to have multiple heads of state on the podcast to discuss from the state board of different surveying, uh, excuse me, different surveying state boards to come onto the show. And we're going to have lawyers coming onto the show to talk to you about exactly what you can and what you cannot offer as a drone pilot for quote unquote mapping services. This is also why I have been calling it modeling for quite some time. Um, And recently with this whole issue uh, that's, you know, going around the internet with uh, a drone deploy user being shut down in California, the issue has been raised again. So I just want to make sure that you guys, um, you guys are getting the right information. But before we go into today's question, Rob has, he's going to handle our ad for the day because, well, he just does such a good job at it. I mean, like, don't you love listening to him talk about these things? (laughs) Uh, um, okay. Anywho, we are very, very thankful for videoblocks.com and audioblocks.com, and they're offering a deal for our listeners. If you go to videoblocks.com slash drone, you're going to get access to the hundreds of thousands of video clips, audio clips, things that you probably would never be able to get on your own unless you spent a lot of money and a lot of time, left your family behind just to go get a bunch of clips to use in that video that you're doing for the dealership or whoever you're doing it for. The resort, they've got a lot of great stuff on there that you can tap into and complete that video that you're putting together that is going to wow your client. So check them out, videoblocks.com slash drone, and uh, let us know what you think. We'd really like to hear that as well. So Definitely. Let's hear that question, Rob. I'm super stoked to talk about modeling. Uh... Hey, guys. This is Brian in Arizona. Um, I'm very interested and excited about learning how to do mapping and modeling. Um, I've heard you and a lot of other people say on multiple occasions that it's the future of the drone industry. Um, I have no personal experience or history in this this field, and I'm curious who actually wants these models and maps created and how would I go about finding them and contacting them so that I can try to get my business going. Uh, Thank you very much. Great question, Brian. I like your proactiveness. Hasn't done any of this yet, but he wants to look into it. Understands that it's where things are going, at least in part, if not significant part. Um, there's a lot of different places or directions that he can go with this. There right? are a lot of different directions that he can go with this. And this, again, goes back to the legalities issue of, you know, quote unquote, drone mapping. But creating models is one thing. Interpreting maps or models is also something that drone pilots should really stay away from unless they have, you know, a quote unquote surveyor's license or they're working with a surveyor or a civil engineer. But if we actually move away from doing, let's say, uh, topographical maps, Um, or ortho mosaic maps, there is a lot of really good stuff that we can do with models. Um, 
And, you know, one of those things is interactive maps. So, like, one thing that I've been doing is working with some high-end luxury realtors recently in creating models of these properties and mm-hmm. then using 360 images and putting those 360 image annotations inside of the models themselves, hosting them on the Internet. And then that way, these it, it's like almost the realtors are mixing Matterport with drone stuff. Yeah. And 360 images. It's all about, you know, navigation, though. You've got to have some significant web experience to actually do interactive models. But as, you know, more and more um, institutions are working on the deliverables for maps and models on the Internet, there's more and more coming out there for your clients to be able to take this data, interpret it themselves, and also consume the data. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people who are just trying to get into mapping and modeling, I would definitely check out the guys at Uplift. I know DroneBase is doing more stuff, um, but Uplift is is really paying a lot more money right. than DroneBase. And you can go out and you can do cell phone tower inspections. You can do construction modeling. Construction modeling really isn't about, you know, as, as they would say, surveying. Um, a lot of people just want to see permanent installation. They want to see the progress. They want to see what's been built, what hasn't. It's really a 360... Uh, interactive model that you can actually really get a bird's eye view and move around. You know, Mm -hmm. you are in control of the camera essentially at that point. It's not up to the drone videographer for you to say, hey, I need you to go out and shoot this video and do this and do that and blah, 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 blah. You can actually see very fine detail on what's been done, what hasn't been done. And um, it's been very useful for uh, a lot of different clients. Yeah, so it takes that to a new level as far as, like you said, the detail. And and maybe you've got an investor in Dubai or something who's interested in the building that you're putting up in L.A. And rather than just some images, it's creating a more interactive experience for that investor, which looks makes the developer look better, makes you look better. So... It's just taking it to a deeper level, which is kind of how the world just works. It is kind of how the world just works. In addition to that, though, a lot of people are not using models and are quote unquote drone mapping for marketing. And I'm Mm. seeing a lot of that really come up from like, you know, we're working on this project of marketing and mapping studio towns here in New Mexico, which is a big deal because then location managers can plan their shoots. They get these lifelike models and they understand the area that they're getting into before they go out there and film a movie, which is really cool. Also seeing that for a lot of golf courses. A lot of golf courses are implementing these point clouds into their um, navigation software, which is all about just the little golf carts going around. It's no like formal navigation. So surveyors like you can like pump the brakes there. Um, But um, they're also using it for demonstration purposes of the, the course themselves. And I think that that's really, really important to showcase people what they can expect when they play certain golf courses. Sure. But, you know, in addition to that, a lot of people are using modeling to just go over, um, you know, what they can expect when they're, you know, essentially buying something. It's a way to go out and prove mm-hmm. that something exists. Um, it's a way to go out and, and, and market and show off in a very you know, real setting of, of what's there and what isn't. Because oftentimes a lot of people are told that one thing is there and it's, it's just not. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we've talked about is uh, as it relates to perhaps getting out there and doing resorts, for example. Um, You're going to give the people that are looking at your resort an opportunity to kind of, again, go deeper as to what the experience is like as opposed to just pictures or even video. Because in video, as you alluded to a little bit earlier, Paul, the person creating the video is the one who's directing you where to look and where to go. But when you turn that into a model an interactive model, which you can do through this mapping process. Now you're giving that control over the person who's on your site checking out your resort. So it's just one of those really great upsells that people can use to increase your business. Yeah. In addition, a lot of farmers are using it as well. It's being used in agriculture to really get a bird's eye view and, you know, quick data sets on exactly what they're growing, uh, the volume that they're getting. In addition, a lot of people are using this for, you know, volumetric measurements of just like essentially foliage growth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that's not super highly technical, but they need to know like, what can they expect to quote unquote tear down or what can they expect um, to get as far as, you know, um, and another thing that I'm seeing, sorry, my mind is just jumping from place to place to place um, in disaster management. They're trying to measure Mm -hmm. exactly 
how much material is being cleaned up because the government pays for that. So, you know, if they had a quick way to measure truckloads of material going out, because this is something that used to be fraudulent all the time is that, you know, they would fill up a truck half full of pallets and then put the rest of the damaged debris on top of that, call it a full truckload right. and go out there and, you know, get paid by the government. And this could be one way that you could get, you know, pictures mm -hmm. and a measurement for the government to say, all right, well, this is, you know, a full truckload, but this is what it looked like. So you can actually, you know, kind of go through there and, and, and take a look at each truckload. I mean, I think this is one of the things that we're just really scratching the surface on. I don't think that we're even going to be able to cover all the appropriate uses of drone mapping and modeling. I mean, from permanent record of installation on construction sites to agriculture to, uh, gosh, to marketing, marketing and yeah. modeling of locations for, let's say, okay, we talked about movies. Let's talk about, you know, the travel bureau. What is it called? Um, conventioners and travel bureau, C ACVB or whatever, Albuquerque Convention, Convention and, and Visitors Bureau. Yeah, Visitors Bureau. That's the word I was looking mm. for. So there are a lot of things that you can actually use um, modeling and mapping for. Um, and I think it's becoming an industry that is going to disrupt a lot of other industries because there's so much that you can do with it. Yeah. I want, uh, so kind of a question for you, Paul, as far as your perspective, the drone industry has taken some time to sort of get into the the mode of acceptance, if you will, by society, by the people who would actually use it. Does this take that to another level? So, for example, if you're going to the head of the Albuquerque Convention and Visitors Bureau, how difficult of a time are you going to have explaining to them the value of this? Or is it getting to the point where it's pretty it's pretty doable? I think the explaining the value is all about visuals because, in mm -hmm. fact, I was recently talking to someone in another state about helping them advertise their uh, studio locations, and he was like, oh, well... We already talked to someone who that someone was from here in town about doing point clouds, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, that's cool. But he's like, yeah, they're using LIDAR, super techy, super cool. And although it just didn't really look like and show off, you know, our our stuff very well. And I showed right. him one of the models that we did. And he was like, wow. He's like, that that's like lifelike. That I looks amazing. That. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that the visual representation is just so important. And also showing people what they can do with the data, and the keyword is they, mm -hmm. because you've, you've drone, you know, drone guys have got to be really careful. The acquisition of the data, the processing of the data to create these point clouds is totally okay. You're going to get into significant trouble though if you start interpreting these maps, and you're doing so for, uh, you know, planning, and you're mm -hmm. doing so. You can't do anything for sight lines. You know, you can't. Um, you got to be really careful. And that's something that we're going to have a, multiple podcasts on in the future. And we will discuss that. But a lot of people are not really explaining how or showcasing how modeling and mapping can be used for marketing, which in my eyes right. is really, really important. You know, people want to have a virtual experience of going to certain places and experiencing certain things. In as lifelike a manner as possible. Exactly. And if yeah. you're creating models where people can literally walk into a model and, you know, put on VR glasses, because one of the things that people aren't talking about is drone models, drone maps, photogrammetry is how most video game maps are made. Mm -hmm. It's how you navigate through video games are these lifelike models that are point clouds. And, you know, having those, those files... It allows games to be created, but it also allows for interactive spaces to be created. So more and more travel bureaus, um, more and more tourism bureaus are going to be looking at ways to engage and interact their clients and creating a model that people could put VR glasses on and walk through your models. I mean, if you are not familiar with this, this is totally doable right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you create a good point cloud and it's all about how you render the point cloud, you can put that point cloud in a gaming engine and totally walk through it with, you know, Google um, Cardboard. So just, I don't even know this, but I'm going to ask, does our current suite of courses explain that part of it that you just went into? Not the, yet. No, it does not explain that yet because it's something that I'm still getting into right now and actually okay. working with someone from NASA on how to do this because it's so technically driven. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's, it's extremely uh, important. Actually, if you remember a little while ago, I opened up that executable file mm -hmm. on your computer and it was actually a map. That is um, a program that you can walk through the model if you had VR glasses on. So it's we really are, cool stuff. Yeah, we are kind of messing with it, but 
but we haven't done training on it yet. Well, and as an example of how mainstream this is becoming, if it, well, I, I, pro- I wouldn't say that it has become, but it's becoming, there was just a commercial from a local remodeling company. And they are bringing people into their studio and they're using VR glasses to help people visualize what they can make their house look like on the inside. Yeah. So that tells you how mainstream this is. We're True. becoming. True. And this is just an extension of that. Agreed. And if you get into it now, you're going to be in a good spot. So. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, guys, well, that is going to do it for this one. Uh, there are so many ideas. There are so many things that you can be doing with drone maps and drone models. It's unreal. But just imagine, just, just remember to focus on the benefits of photogrammetry over LIDAR. Lifelike models, color in your models, uh, the ability to, you know, clean them up really nice and do different things with them. You know, LiDAR is really good for bare earth models, finite objects, super small finite objects, but they're not good for lifelike. So just make sure you understand that you understand the differences. It's very, very important. And again, we'll be doing a... um, We'll be doing a podcast here on the legalities of drone mapping and modeling. But when it comes to marketing and it comes to visual representations of things, the sky's the limit. Right. So anyway, but that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. (laughs)